In Cuba, appearances can be deceiving. This crumbling nation, one of the world's last outposts of communism, has struggled under economic sanctions for almost half a century. But while it may be one of the poorest countries in the Caribbean, its medical report card is now the envy of most of its neighbours. Infant mortality rate, under five mortality rate, maternal morbidity and mortality rate, life expectancy, all of these healthcare indicators are far better than any other country in the region. You know, this crazy situation, how has Cuba done it? How has Cuba achieved that? How have they managed with such severe sanctions against them to achieve that? In Cuba, armed with little more than the absolute basics, even a facelift is possible, and it's free. Today, Maria Elena Yena is having plastic surgery to remove a scar from her neck. But this is not an operation for the faint-hearted patient. Maria is wide awake. In more affluent nations, such a procedure would be done under a general anaesthetic. The only pain relief here is administered locally. Three hours after the operation began, and as other patients have come and gone, this procedure is coming to an end. Maria is just moments from going home. She's pleased to have taken the first step in removing the scar from her neck. <laughs> General surgeon Dr. Vivian Revilla Rodriguez says the surgery's success goes to show that a lot can be done with a little. O sea, sin que te quepa duda, la alta tecnología juega un papel fundamental. Pero yo creo que este tipo de medicina que nosotros hacemos sin, sin tan alta tecnología te ayuda mucho a prepararte en ti mismo. Utilizar métodos antiguos como la clínica, otras cosas, yo creo que desde el punto de vista de formación te ayuda. Cuando tú tienes la formación como la nuestra, con poca tecnología, eres capaz de pues, enfrentarte en un mundo de alta tecnología, pero ya estás muy bien preparado. Despite the impact of sanctions, something appears to be working here. For it's not just its poor neighbours that Cuba has managed to surpass in terms of basic health indicators. According to UNICEF, Cuba's infant mortality rate in 2005 was lower than the United States, and life expectancy rivals most developed nations. Cuba se ha estado preparando para esto durante décadas. Eh, Cuba es el país que tiene, por, por lejos, con, este, le sigue el mío Uruguay, en América eh, más médicos por habitante. Eh, no recuerdo la cifra en este momento exactamente, pero eh, un medio cada 200 habitantes, lo cual es, es, es una cifra comparativa con el resto del continente, muy, muy grande. Dr. Jeannie Ellis is an Australian public health specialist who has lived and worked in Cuba. 
having worked in other countries, I don't know any other country where everyone in the community can walk to their local doctor. If they can't walk to the doctor, the doctor will do a home visit because the doctor can walk to the house. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, not even in first world countries is there, can I think of another system where that exists. Dr. Yamurka Estevez is one of Cuba's tens of thousands of doctors working at the country's first line of medical defence as a neighbourhood family doctor. Right now, she's on her way to see an elderly patient, too sick and frail, to make it to her clinic. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. A typical afternoon is spent making home visits, a pattern of health care carried out by family doctors across the country, even in rural areas. Francisco Menacatea, or Pancho as he likes to be called, has been caring for his wife with the help of their son since she became ill with diabetes. He's a loyal cadre, or historico, as the elder generation of Cubans who were alive at the time of Cuba's revolution are called. Dinero? Dinero? No. No, ni medicina, todo es gratis aquí en Cuba. No, aquí no cuesta nada. ¿Quién dijo eso? He's full of enthusiasm for his country's health care system. Para mí, me parece a mi juicio que en el mundo otro sistema de salud como el que hay en Cuba no lo hay en ningún lado. Así lo, lo garantizo. Perdóneme, yo estuve, yo estuve en los Estados Unidos. Tenía mi madre allá que falleció allá. Y yo vi las cosas allí y no me gustaron. No me gustaron. Porque usted ingresa a un hospital allí y si usted no tiene money, usted se muere. In Cuba, free access to health care is more than just an expectation. It's considered a birthright. Dr. Yamurka is optimistic her patient will recover. Nosotros le hacemos ahora un ingreso en el hogar, que son los pacientes que pueden tener un seguimiento en el hogar. Se le indica su tratamiento y ella debe evolucionar favorablemente. She's proud of her profession, but in a country where Cuban doctors are paid as little as $10 a week, this was one question she was not comfortable answering as government minders stood by. Eso le, eso le importa que no se gane mucho dinero siendo médico. Realmente, mejor no voy a contestarte la pregunta. When Fidel Castro seized power in Cuba in 1959, half of the country's doctors fled overseas. But the nation's health system and its level of education have since become much flagged cornerstones of the Cuban Revolution. President Castro once decreed that if Cuba ever surpassed the United States in public health, it would be Cuba's historical revenge for decades of hostility and sanctions, which target medicines, medical technology and medical information. In Cuba, the Cold War is alive and well. Bush sigue repitiendo, soy un presidente de tiempo de guerra para justificar su ampliación de poderes. Today, the 79-year-old leader is once again trading punches with his arch enemy, the United States. This time, in retaliation against moves to adorn its mission with electronic ticker tape, 
relaying news from the outside world into this highly censored state. A move that's earned the United States newly arrived envoy a nickname. You've been labelled the little gangster by the president. It's obviously, you know, a term that doesn't particularly concern you. From, is it what you expected? Oh, I think at this point, I've come to expect almost anything from this regime. Um, I'm not surprised by anything from this regime. These flags are being raised in what was once the car park of the US mission to block the messages from public view and to honour victims of what it considers US-sponsored violence against Cuba. The United States is standing firm by its policy of imposing wide-ranging economic sanctions, which also target the health sector. The aim is to not provide resources to a totalitarian regime. Uh, it's that simple. In a, in a country where the economy is 95 to 98 percent state controlled, state owned, any money that comes into the country is going to go, 95 to 98 percent of it, to the state apparatus. It's not going to go to the Cuban people. The United States remains the world's largest medical market. All major pharmaceutical companies buy for business there, and to deal with Cuba could be costly. So, unable to import medicines, Cuba started to make its own for use at home and to sell overseas. Using more than one billion US dollars in state funding, Cuban scientists' biggest success so far has been its hepatitis B vaccine. How many countries are you selling that to? We are, we are commercializing hepatitis B to many countries, more than 44 countries, in fact. Last year, biotech exports doubled to 300 million US dollars, a major boost to Cuba's health budget. Manuel Reyes Perez Castaneda is a research scientist turned business executive at one of Cuba's largest biotechnology institutes. We received an investment of 1,000 million US dollars in the 90s um, with all the product that we have generated. We have paid back already all this investment and we are working right now in positive cash flow. I guess as the, the, the saying goes that adversity is the mother of creativity and it's true, Cuba has had to, in the face of adversity, invest heavily in biotechnology to develop their own vaccines. Cuba develops its own vaccines and then sells those vaccines to other poorer countries for a cheaper price than they would have to buy vaccines on the international market that are produced by big, big pharmaceutical companies from the United States. There's no doubt that Cuba's medical achievements have won a kudos at home and abroad. But it's the training of thousands of international medical students for free that's marking Cuba's stamp on the region. Todos los estudiantes, este es un proyecto totalmente gratuito. Esto es una eh, un acto solidario de Cuba que sigue su ética desde los principios de la misma eh, los principios de la revolución, donde la enseñanza en Cuba es gratuita y la cooperación también que hemos hecho con los países en la formación de recursos humanos es gratuita en la escuela. No se paga nada. The Pan American Medical School is the brainchild of President Castro. More than 12,000 students are currently studying here. They come from as far afield as East Timor. A six year, all expenses paid study program aimed at mass producing doctors for the developing world. The first class graduated last year and have now returned home to work, a condition of the course. 
planteado que a partir de este año y dentro de unos 10 años más, nosotros podamos llegar a formar en el país aproximadamente unos 100.000 a 150.000 médicos. This is medical diplomacy at work, though it's not something the school's director will admit. Bueno, nosotros realmente el término como tal no lo manejamos, porque Cuba realmente yo creo que de una forma muy, muy sencilla, de una forma muy solidaria, eh, de una forma diríamos hasta muy humilde, ¿no? pues contribuye en lo que puede con el mundo, no dando nada a lo que nos sobra, sino compartiendo las cosas que tenemos. A diferencia de lo que ocurre en los cambios neurovegetativos y en las neuronas, Nikita Thomas is a second-year medical student. She's one of a group of 70 from the United States. The majority of people that are here are from immigrant parents, um, from cities that are underrepresented, you know, on the poor end of the class system, I guess you can say. So on that level, we are majority, yeah, minorities in the states of color, Latinos, uh, African Americans, Caribbean Americans. It may be illegal for American citizens to visit Cuba, but there's a legal loophole when it comes to studying for free. But it's not just medical knowledge she'll be taking home. The thing that I'm actually very, very pleased about is the lessons that I'm learning outside of the classroom, actually. I mean, I come from such a place that is so full with consumption and, and individuality, and to come to a country where it's more about me, my brother, my sister helping, not more of just me, mine, and what I can get, and learning that a lot of things that we have in the States is really not necessary. Here I'm doing without and I'm fine. Cuba itself currently has one of the best doctor-to-patient ratios in the world, and its own training programs are producing surplus doctors. Que es un método directamente proporcional al aumentar la intensidad de color, aumenta, es, supuestamente ahí aumenta la concentración de glucosa en el paciente. Like most of the students here, Danae Fontaine Alvarez is set to graduate in a few years' time, and her first posting will probably be overseas. Bueno, primeramente el poder ayudar a, los, a las personas, no tanto de Cuba como de otros países, es una carrera muy linda, muy humanitaria que brinda ayuda desinteresada a cualquier persona que la necesite. Primeramente tiene que gustarle a una persona también, tiene que nacerle. Lleva mucho esfuerzo, conlleva mucho sacrificio esta carrera. Pero bueno, ya, como ya le dije, hay, hay que gustarle. Y aquí en Cuba, por lo menos, nos brinda la posibilidad de cualquier persona que esté interesada en estudiar medicina, de, o sea, le abren las puertas. The United States sees the export of Cuba's medical missionaries in a different light. The trade-off being, okay, we will send doctors to your country, we will take patients from your country, but we expect your support on UN votes, we expect your support on economic issues ar around the world, and, and that's the payment that's, that's made. Cuba's overseas medical corps now numbers more than 27,000. It has dispatched doctors across Latin America, with Venezuela being the largest recipient. Cuba's deal with Venezuela swaps doctors for oil. <laughs> Cuba gets 90,000 barrels of oil a day for the next 15 years, a cup price deal on oil reported to be worth up to a billion dollars. In return, Venezuela gets more than 22,000 Cuban doctors. Yo no tengo una cifra de, 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 del, del dinero que Cuba gana con los médicos en Venezuela, definitivamente, pero una parte de, de lo que los médicos producen se usa. Eh, para la importación de petróleo. Pero yo sostengo que lo más importante es la seguridad en el suministro. O sea, tener un suministro seguro, estable, por un acuerdo de gobierno, es para los países que no producen petróleo una garantía. There is no doubt that medicine in Cuba is now big business. Revenues raised across the health sector now rival those generated from tourism. 
Cuban authorities are reluctant to release official figures. The government economist Dr. Juan Trainer says figures released last year give an indication of the worth of the health sector. Around two billion, two billion and a half, maybe. And the tourism sector? It's uh, the same figures. And now Cuba has combined its health and tourism sectors, profiting from medical tourism. Scores of Venezuelans are lining up for free eye surgery in Havana as part of the two nations' medical care for oil deal. Okay. Where is he from? Venezuela. Not all patients get this for free. Medical tourism has become a nice little earner for Cuba at this state-run hospital for foreigners. Nosotros en la clínica tiene 62 habitaciones. Está cubierta, saturada la capacidad. Tenemos muchos de los tratamientos que se hacen ambulatorios. Ha sido parte de esta estrategia de personas que están en hotel porque vienen y entonces bueno se hace ese Matthias Kuno is following the lead of his uncle in coming to Cuba from Germany to seek treatment for retinitis pigmentosa or tunnel vision. Ich bin jetzt schon das zweite Mal hier. Ich war vor einem Jahr das erste Mal da, bin operiert worden und bin jetzt gerade hier, um um meine Nachbehandlung zu machen, abschließende Untersuchungen und so weiter. The United States, a nation where medicine is very much big business, has responded by accusing and condemning Cuba for attempting to do the same. Why is health and medicine targeted? Because medicine has a humanitarian aspect and it has a business aspect. And so what we're targeting is the business aspect. Um, and so much of what Cuban medicine is, is a business. It has nothing to do with the humanitarian side of you know, the Hippocratic Oath and, and curing someone who's sick. It's about business, and it's about cold, hard business. Cuba's health system has evolved out of necessity. The battle to beat the sanctions is a constant in everyone's lives. But there is also hope that if the US ever eased or dismantled its economic blockade, increased prosperity would flow to all. Y yo estoy convencido de que si los Estados Unidos levantaran las sanciones a Cuba, muchos norteamericanos vendrían a Cuba a tratarse y a solucionar sus problemas de salud porque no tienen cobertura de seguro médico en Estados Unidos. Y Cuba sería una opción mucho más barata y de mejor calidad inclusive que las opciones que tienen en Estados Unidos.